as I've gotten higher um, in the ranks of football, American football, it's it's definitely interesting to see how the mindsets of people, you know, change. Um, you know, it definitely gets a lot more serious as you get higher, and the mindsets, you know, it's not. You see, you hear and see, and you know, see a lot of different things, a lot of different beliefs. Um, but for me, I've just always tried to remain grounded in who I am and understand as well that just because I, you know, make scores, score touchdowns, um, that doesn't make me better than the next person who um, I was originally in college. That doesn't make me better than someone who just, you know, are getting a degree, you know, and don't play football, you know. So um, at the end of the day, my job is to serve God. And, you know, the Bible says, and you know, whatever you do, make sure you do it all for the glory of God. And so um, I try to keep that at the forefront of, you know, everything I do, whether that's in football or, you know, just in regular everyday life. Unapologetic from Premier Unbelievable. Thank you for joining us on Unapologetic with me, Ruth Jackson. Before we hear from today's guest, just a quick reminder to head over to our website, premierunbelievable.com to find more shows, articles and resources. And if you register or sign up for our newsletter there, you can choose from a range of free eBooks. But now for today's show. I am delighted to be joined by Tyler Scott, who is the former Cincinnati Bearcat receiver, an American footballer who is also a Christian. Tyler, thank you so much for joining us today on the show. Glad to be here. I'm glad to be here. Well, Tyler, you have just got in from training and I'm like pretty much about to go to bed. Um, But thank you for taking the time to speak to us. And before we start, I've got a bit of a confession, actually, Tyler, because as a Brit, my first thought when I hear the word football is soccer. But you clearly (laughs) mean American football, which obviously to you is just football. There's no need to call it American football. (laughs) Um, So if it's okay with you, Tyler, when we're having a conversation, uh, everything that sort of is said today, would you maybe just be gracious enough to speak in a way that someone who perhaps doesn't know anything about football would still understand what you're saying? Yes, I can try my best. (laughs) That's very kind. Thank you. Obviously, I know tons. I know tons. I'm just, you know, I'm just thinking about everyone else, Tyler. Um, Mm -hmm. We are recording this the day after the Super Bowl, uh, the annual playoff game of the National Football League, the NFL, which obviously then determines the league champion. So whoever wins the Super Bowl is the champion of the league. Would you mind just quickly sharing some of your thoughts about last night's Super Bowl? Yeah, I mean, um, well, you know, the first thing they kind of recognize is that, you know, it was the first time um, they had two uh, African American quarterbacks going up against each other in the Super Bowl, which is, you know, which is ho- uh, huge, and um, you know that's something that's you know really good to see. And then you know as well, there's two of the youngest matchups as well. Um, I want to say Patrick Mahomes. I want to say he was 24, 25, and Jalen Hurts is 24. So uh, we had the youngest matchup ever, as you know, as well as seeing you know two diverse um, players go at it. So you know that that was huge, you know, just from the beginning. Um, but, uh, I mean, it, it was a great game, uh, just watching and, uh, you know, it, you know, a lot of people were upset, you know, by the ending, uh, you know, ended it, you know, ended with the refs, you know, in a, in a, in a bag, I won't say a bad, but they were calling the game like they needed to, um, you know, but, you know, fans don't like to see when, you know, games end on, you know, we're decided by referees or there's a flag or anything like that. But, uh, but overall it was a great game. Um, I love seeing Rihanna. You know, we haven't seen her perform and, you know, she's finally hit the spotlight. So um, it was great seeing her. Uh, She's also pregnant, by the way. We all found out with her second child. So uh, that was cool to watch as well. Um, But no, I mean, it was a great, great game. Great night. Um, You know, wish the game could end a little better, but, uh, you know, it was great to see. And Tyler, am I right in thinking that both of those quarterbacks are also Christians and quite sort of, uh, you know, out there overt Christians within the NFL? Yeah, I mean, both have been very outspoken. Um, I actually posted something on my Instagram the other day uh, of Jalen Hurts. He was talking about, uh, I want to say he talked about John 13 and 7. Um, I think I want to say he was talking about being patient. And uh, uh, I think it was Jesus. Uh, yeah, it was Jesus talking about, you know, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will later. And so, uh, you know, he's been very outspoken about his faith as well as, um, you know, Patrick Mahomes. Tyler, before we start talking about how you ended up playing football, would you share just a little bit about your own faith journey? Because you grew up going to church, didn't you? Yeah, so um, I, I've been going to church since I, uh, church since I came out the womb. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I went to uh, I went to the church. It's called Community Fellowship Chapel, um, based in Ohio, um, out of Akron, Ohio, on the east side of Akron. Um, been going there since I was little. Um, you know, my mom, I was my mom was part of the choir praise team. Um, my dad, he was one of the ministers is there as well. 
Uh, and then I as well was part of the praise team as well at times in the choir. So I, you know, I did my share um, as well. But, uh, you know, I was just kind of rooted and grounded in the church. Um, that's kind of where everything stems from. And I've been following Christ ever since then. And do you think there was a moment in your life when it sort of became real for you? Um, I guess, you know, if you've grown up in the church, I suppose sometimes it can be easy to just kind of take on the faith of your parents. But was there something Mm -hmm. when it sort of dropped for you, for Tyler, it sort of, you know, your faith became yours? Yeah, so I want to say it was my freshman year. I I got hurt during a a football game. I was injured. And I want to say I broke my arm. And, you know, they seen my arm and it was like, it, it was, it was cracked in half and it was just deformed. So I ended up going that night to the hospital and I ended up having to get surgery to get it put back in place. And so while I was on the, oper- actually, I, I want to say, I don't know if I want to say it was actually surgery, but I want to say they sedated me is what they, the technical term for it was. So they sedated me. And so while I was under, um, you know, sedation and they were working on my arm, uh, I guess I said some things that were interesting. <laughs> and so I end up, you know, end up finishing and I end up coming to after the medicine ends up wearing off. And so I asked the nurse, I'm like, hey, and my mom was in the room as well. And I was like, hey, you know, did I end up saying anything? And she was like, yeah, you only said one thing the whole time. And she said, all you kept saying was Jesus is real. Jesus is real. Jesus is real. While I was on the table. She said, that's all you said the whole time was Jesus is real. And from that point on, I was like, wow, you know, that was just a spirit speaking, you know, out of me, you know, even in my, you know, state of just unconsciousness, so to speak. And so um, for me, that was just a huge um, shift, you know, to really see that God really lives in me. And so, um, you know, that moment was just, you know, huge for me. And do you think there's anything that you could kind of put your finger on then for for saying why you believe in God? I suppose in some senses that was slightly a subconscious experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess you probably don't remember much of what happened there. But I suppose if someone asked you why you were completely in your rational mind, why I guess maybe one of your teammates or something like that. Why do you, Tyler Scott, Mm -hmm. believe in God? Is is there something you would say? Oh, I I think, uh, you know, for me, you know, you just look at, I think you just, if you just look around, you know, the Bible talks about it in the book of Romans, uh, chapter one, um, it talks about how God makes it evident to everyone, um, you know, through his divine nature, his invisible qualities, um, you know, how he makes it plain to them by, you know, the works that he's done. And so, you know, the Bible says that we are without excuse, you know, so I think when you just look around at, you know, just nature, just the way things operate, um, you look at, I mean, something is like a pregnancy in a woman, um, you know, how complicated that is and, you know, how life continues to go, you know, just on its own, you know. And so um, if you just kind of just look around and just look at life, how things operate, how there's so much order um, in the world and, you know, just in nature, uh, you know, it's just hard to to sit there and just be like, you know, it's not something greater. And, you know, so, you know, that's usually my answer when people you know, end up asking me. <laughs> Tyler, how did you get into football? Was it a bit like church? Was it something you, you'd been doing your whole life and then it just developed into something greater? Yeah, I, I started at a young age. Uh, I want to say I've kind of w- was grown into it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, my brother, he played football in high school. Um, so I, I grew up going to all his high school football games and, and I loved watching him and you know, all the players around him. They were, you know, pretty good. And so uh, my dad was also a huge football fan and um, you know, anytime, you know, Sunday was on, we we're watching football. I was a huge Browns fan growing up. Uh, you know, that's all we listened to on the radio was the Cleveland Browns after church on Sunday. We were listening to the Brown game, Browns game on the way home. Uh, you know, so I kind of was, you know, just really raised in that the football culture, really sports culture, but football um, was just kind of something that um, was kind of just in me. And so uh started playing flag football, I want to say about five years old, and I fell in love with it. Now, Tyler, um, how this might be a massive question, but how has your faith impacted your football? And do you feel like that's changed as the kind of level of football has stepped up and up and up? Um, definitely. Um, you know, for me, uh, you know, it kind of starts with, I want to say my father, he, you know, he always told me to be humble. Uh, you know, that's kind of how I've lived my life. That's kind of been the basis of how I've you know, approach to everything is just humility and just being humble and everything. And so, um, you know, I started at a very young age. Uh, you know, I remember when I was, I remember my first, my first tackle uh, scrimmage, tackle American football scrimmage. 
<laughs> uh, I ended up running. I was going against this team, and I got you know I got like a couple touchdowns. I had about three or four touchdowns scores, and uh, I remember coming off the field, and you know everybody was congratulating me and you know giving me my props. And I remember I was you know kind of at the time my dad called it toot my own horn, and so I was you know did you see when I did this? Did you see when I did that? Did you see when I you know I was only about eight nine years old. And so, you know, from that point on four, my dad told me, he said, never toot your own horn. And he said, let everyone else do that for you. He said, you, you don't have to go out and, you know, tell everyone what you did. You know, they've seen it and um, let everyone else, you know, talk about you. And so from that point on, you know, my, my perspective on how I approach football, how I approach life change, um, you know, just from my daily walk. And so definitely as I've gotten higher um, in the ranks of football, American football, it's, it's definitely interesting to see how the mindsets of people, you know, change. Um, you know, it definitely gets a lot more serious as you get higher and the mindsets, you know, it's not, you see, you hear and see, and, you know, see a lot of different things, a lot of different beliefs. Um, but for me, I've just always tried to remain grounded in who I am and understand as well that just because I, you know, make scores, score touchdowns, um, that doesn't make me better than the next person who, um, I was originally in college. That doesn't make me better than someone who just, you know, are getting a degree, you know, and don't play football, you know. So um, at the end of the day, my job is to serve God. And, you know, the Bible says, and you know, whatever you do, make sure you do it all for the glory of God. And so um, I try to keep that at the forefront of, you know, everything I do, whether that's in football or, you know, just in regular everyday life. So I guess, how do you do that then? How do you glorify God both on and off the pitch? Is, does, is part of that involve kind of sharing your experiences of God, sharing your faith with your teammates? Yeah, so I think um, first and foremost, I mean, I just try, I try to walk it out. Um, I try to walk out my faith and I try to walk and be like Christ. And so, um, you know, a lot of my teammates kind of notice there's something different about me. Um, just the way I move, just the way I interact. And a lot of times I'll have people kind of question why I am the way that I am. Mm -hmm. And um, those kind of open doors for me to kind of share and spread the gospel as well. Um, you know, so just kind of just living Christ-like and not conforming, you know, to the world, which the Bible says not to, do. don't, you know, be conformed to the ways of the world. And so, you know, I try not to do that. And so, um, you know, it can be difficult at times too, you know, being in college, you know, also in kind of the field that I'm in, football, American football, you know, you have to do certain things, be a certain way, so to speak, um, have a certain fasana, you know, to gain, you know, trust and likability and things of that nature. Um, but just continuing to, you know, be who I am, you know, as far as my foundation and, um, you know, it opens doors, you know, for people to kind of, you know, question and, you know, kind of, you know, try to understand me. And so um, also off the field. It's the same way, you know, just making sure that I'm walking out, trying to be like Christ, just, you know, so the light can shine through me. Now, Tyler, if you got drafted into the NFL, that would obviously be a huge, huge step in your career. How would that kind of, I guess, pinnacle of your career, well, possibly even even more sort of winning the Super Bowl would be the real pinnacle of your career. How would mm -hmm. that compare to your faith in Jesus? What would it mean to you being drafted into the NFL and then, I guess, you know, winning the Super Bowl? Yeah, I mean, you know... It's something that I've always wanted to do since I was little. Um, something I, you know, something I prayed about. Um, I've been through a lot of adversity as far as just trying to get there. Um, whether it's I've had doubters, things of that nature. Um, but I've always remained true to my faith. And to reach a level like this, um, to be, you know, 0.5 percent of the world. I mean, it's honestly, I haven't got there yet, you know. But I, I know, like, just on my way there in the process, even now. It's hard to even describe because it's just like, wow, like God has been so good to me and um, he's used football to be um, to almost love me, you know. And so I've gotten so many different things as far as my family, as far as myself um, through football. And so, um, you know, I, I just think it's, you know, God just loving me through, you know, something that I love. And, um, you know, he's just shown so much grace and mercy towards me through this whole journey. And so. Um, you know, to reach a level like that, you know, I can only thank him because it's, it's very few that can actually say that they have. Tyler, football or soccer um, <laughs> here in the UK is huge and our players are really well known. Um, but it seems like it's sort of even more next level in the States, um, like from, from what I've seen over here. Mm -hmm. NFL seems to be almost like a religion and the players in it are almost kind of like 
these sort of untouchable gods. I mean, how do you feel about that as a Christian kind of going into that environment? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I kind of, it kind of comes with the territory, uh, you know, especially and you are correct in the States here. Football um, is pretty much the number one sport. And, um, you know, it's, you know, the Super Bowl is where all the stars come out, um, where everyone gathers, you know, it's the most, mosh, most watched event, um, you know, in, in the States. So, um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of fame, so to speak, is, you know, that comes along with the territory as well. Um, but I just see it as, you know, even more of a light that you can use, um, you know, to share your platform. I think Steph Curry, he's he's all he's done a great job of that um, basketball player here in the States. Uh, he, he's done a great job of using his platform, being a multi, you know, champion, um, you know, doing some things. But he uses his platform to share Christ, you know, to always give the glory to God and always, you know, remind people, of, you know, how he got here and who he serves. And so for me personally, I just see that as another opportunity to do that. And I guess this is kind of related, um, but I've also heard that the NFL can be fairly cutthroat. You know, everyone's kind of looking out for number one. There are sometimes players stepping over other players to get to the top of their game. I'm, I'm sure not everything is like that. Um, but, but if there are kind of elements of that within the game, how do you think you as a Christian can be preparing yourself for that kind of dog eat dog world? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, you know, I always, you know, something I always try to say, you know, something I always pray um, is, Lord, you, you just order my steps in your word. You know, I, I say that, you know, constantly, you know, so any decision I make, um, whether that's playing football or just everyday life, um, you know, that it's in his will, you know, and that he orders me in my path and he sets my path as far as the things I need to say, as far as the direction I need to go. Um, you know, I always try not to lean on what the Bible says, your own understanding and, you know, really try to put that on God, you know, for him to just work through me so that when I come across people or situations that, you know, the Holy Spirit can lead me and guide me in those situations so I can act accordingly. That leads me brilliantly into another question I had, actually, that, you know, leading, leaning not on your own understanding, um, because I think mm -hmm. confidence is obviously a really key part of football. You obviously have to have a huge amount of belief in your own ability in order to excel and I guess belief in your team as well. But but does that sometimes feel like it's at odds, do you think, with that biblical picture of actually not leaning on our own strength and accepting that we need God's strength? Yeah, I mean, I guess you can. Um, I guess. I guess it depends on how you look at it. Um, you know, for me personally, you know, I, I try to look at everything as, you know, Christ has given me the abilities to um, do the things that I've, you know, been called to do. And so, you know, he's not going to put me through anything I can't bear. And so, you know, he's given me the tools, you know, to do the things that I've done. And so I just continue to give him glory for that. And so, um, you know, I, I call it walking, you know, having confidence in Christ. Um, you know, so when I step on the field, I have that confidence in Christ. The Bible says that I am a conqueror. Um, it says so many things about me, um, you know, through the spirit that I am so many things through God, because greater is he, you know, that is in me than anyone else that is in the world. So even just in that, I'll have confidence in God that he's going to work through me, that I can get the job done. So, um, you know, that's kind of how I see it, you know, as far as, um, you know, when I compete and I, you know, go against different people. Now, I've seen various kind of NFL players on on social media and things like that talking about God being their helper, giving them strength, obviously a lot of the things that you've just mentioned there. But what about, I guess, when things get really tough? For example, what if your team made the Super Bowl, but then you got injured just before what would probably be the most important game of your career? I guess my question there is like, what does your faith look like then when things are really difficult? How, how do you trust God in those difficult times? Yeah, I mean, you know, not to question God, really, um, you know, to understand that, you know, he has a plan for us. And so, um, you know, maybe there's a reason why I shouldn't be on that field at that particular moment, that particular day. Um, you know, this kind of goes back to when I was a sophomore, uh, my season, sophomore in high school, my season was, you know, kind of cut short. And uh, I didn't get to play. And, you know, I had to sit out the rest of the season. And so I understood that, you know, I, my junior year in high school was kind of the most important year because I wanted to get a scholarship to play uh, college football. And so, you know, I was discouraged because I had went two years. I didn't really get to play. I was hurt, didn't have any, you know, film to give college scouts to really notice me or anything like that. And 
I remember my daddy had a conversation with me because I was just kind of discouraged at the time. And, um, you know, you're going to have to probably correct me or fact check me on this. But, um, you know, he brought a passage, um, you know, it was, it was talking about a farmer in the Bible. And um, I remember God, you know, talked about him uh, letting the, the field rest for a certain amount of days. Um, he said, don't touch the field for a certain amount of days. Um, and I want to say it was like seven years or 70 years, one of the two. And, um, you know, once you come back without touching it, without watering it, without doing everything, without doing all the work, you know, in the field, once you come back, it's going to flourish. And so, you know, he gave me that illusion in, in, in this situation that I was in um, of just not touching myself, you know, just not, you know, going and working and doing all these different things. I was a multi-sport athlete and I had been doing so much and um, I had taken a break. I didn't, you know, do all the sports that I usually did. Um, I got time to get my, my body right and um, came back and I had my best career that I, my best season that I had in my whole, you know, high school career and ended up getting scholarships to go play college football. And so, you know, even in that situation, just now, as I'm older, just understanding that God has a plan. Um, at the time, you may look at it and be like, man, this, you know, this isn't what I thought, you know, but sometimes that's not how, that's not how God operates. And so, um, you know, just really having faith in him um, that he's going to lead you in the right direction. Tyler, you kind of touched on this with that amazing advice from your dad, and he definitely seems like he's been such an important role in your life. For sure. But in those in those moments uh, uh, in your life where you know God has perhaps seemed distant, or you've not understood what on earth is is going on, or you've maybe not doubted His existence but doubted His plans, what what are some of the things that you do to kind of strengthen your faith? Yeah, I think uh, just staying in prayer, um, just staying in constant prayer is the number one thing for me. Um, continue to pray uh, and just continue to keep the faith. Um, you know, that, that's that's the number one thing for me. I um, also love listening to music. I also love worshiping God um, on my way to workouts. Uh, during workouts, uh, you know, guys like to listen to, you know, whether that's rap music or, you know, you know, really loud music, whatever, you know, kind of gets them going. You know, for me, you know, I like to listen to um, Christian music. I listen to gospel music. Um, you know, because the joy of the Lord is my strength. So that's kind of what I've always said since I was little, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So, um, you know, just kind of listening to that just gives me strength, you know, it just gives me, gives me joy um, to work out, to, you know, do what I need to do. And it also just keeps him at the forefront of everything that I do. And so um, I try to make it a, a, to a point to always have a song um, in my spirit, you know, that I kind of just kind of can sing in my head or throughout the day, I always have something to, you know, harp back on to, um, you know, just to keep God on my heart. And do you ever listen to music like that in like when there's teammates around you? And if so, kind of how do they respond to that? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, there's definitely different songs that, you know, I'll put on and um, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, uh, you know, especially in the society and uh, that we're in today, you know, not a lot of people are, um, you know, very fond of it, uh, mm-hmm. you know, but then there are uh, some, but um, you know, there are some songs as well that kind of, uh, you know, kind of trust them a little bit where maybe it's the beat, um, mm-hmm. you know, or, you know, there, maybe it's a famous, you know, kind of more of a famous artist, um, so to speak that kind of everybody recognizes and like, oh yeah, I kind of like that. And so, um, you know, but for me, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty regular, um, for me to kind of, you know, play those type of things and, um, you know, just kind of share, you know, share some of the songs that I listen to. Now, I'm sure I'm probably going to pronounce his name wrong, but Damar Hamlin, is that how you say his name? Yeah, Damar Hamlin, yeah. So at the beginning of um, at the beginning of the year, this NFL player, Damar Hamlin, had a cardiac arrest on the, on the field, which was obviously, you know, a huge kind of tragic event and everyone was rushing around him. And remarkably, the team doctor revived him, didn't he? Like on the, mm-hmm. on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and incredibly, he's going to be playing next season. Um, yeah. But following this heart attack, there was like an outpouring of public prayer on, on social media with lots of people using the hashtag pray for Damar. And I, I, th- I think the thing that really struck me was that a lot of the people who were saying pray for Damar didn't necessarily have any sort of belief and, and wouldn't normally pray in any situation, really. But it mm-hmm. kind of it, there was just this public outpouring of prayer. W- what, what was your response to that, Tyler? And, and what do you think was happening there with kind of America as a whole pouring out this public prayer? Yeah, so I, I think personally, you know, it's, it's easy also as well to hop on friends, um, you know, to kind of see, you know, oh, you know, everyone's kind of posting something and, you know, it's easy for people to just kind of hop on a trend that maybe they don't even believe in. 
uh, but it's kind of the sort of quote unquote cool thing to do, you know, at the time. And so, you know, people will do that. I mean, they won't do it for that, but just not just that, but just even situations in life where um, that kind of almost makes them have to call on God. Um, you know, so you'll see that a lot where people, they'll go through life and they'll be fine. They'll live jolly, do what they need, you know, do what they, you know, please. And soon as something bad happens, it's funny. They either, they either blame God or ask God, you know, you know, for bringing this person back or do this for him. Um, you know, but I think especially, you know, with that, I think it was just, you know, a lot of people were, you know, kind of felt for him. Um, you know, a lot of people had a heart for him and I think, what they were kind of doing was in good faith, so to speak, um, as far as in their hearts. But, um, you know, I think, you know, kind of what you said, like they may not be true believers, but um, it's very easy for people to hop on trends and uh, just kind of partake in what's going on on social media. I mean, do you think there's any sense in which actually people are potentially a bit more open to the possibility of God existing than the statistics would suggest? Because obviously, t- statistically, America is becoming less and less religious. I guess it's pr- becoming a little bit more like the UK. Um, but 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 do things like this show that actually maybe people are a little bit more open to the possibility of God existing? Uh, for sure. I, I think, I mean, personally, I think that everyone has this that, you know, kind of God moment of that kind of aha moment, so to speak, of, you know, is there a God? I think everyone asked that. That's probably the number one question asked in everyone's life. I think if you've been on the earth, you probably had that question in your mind, like, man, is is there a God? And so um, I think just that alone, um, you know, just kind of, you know, kind of settles that for itself, just uh, us existing. And you look around kind of where I said in the beginning, when you just look around at some of the things that happen, um, you know, those type of things, you know, those are, and then you come across, like I said, the DeMar Hamlin. Those are things that kind of just, you know, for me, when I describe it, I'm like, do you think that's a coincidence or do you think that's God? You know, um, I use an analogy. I was actually having a conversation with um, someone the other day, and we were just talking about, um, you know, prayer, faith. Uh, you're talking about God. And so I used an analogy. I was like, so I said, what if I told you, you know, I lost my wallet? And, um, and I, I sat here and I prayed, God, you know, please help me find my wallet. And later on, I find my wallet. What are you going to say? Are you going to say that's coincidence? Or are you going to say that was God? And I think that's just the constant cycle that people go through. Um, you know, it's just, is, is it really God? And, and, and kind of even when Jesus was walking the earth, like he did so many signs and wonders, you know, in front of people, but yet they still didn't believe. And yet they still wanted more, even his own disciples, you know, they still wanted more signs. And um, I want to say Jesus ended up saying a wicked and perverse generation calls for signs. And so, um, you know, people will always continue to ask for signs and see things where it's like, wow, that that that's a God type of um, miracle or, you know, some sort. But even then, it seems like it's just not enough. Um, it's enough to kind of be like, oh, wow, maybe, but it's just not enough. And I think that's where that faith comes in, where it's just like, you have to pick a side. Are you going to, you know, walk by faith and just sit here and be like, I need you to basically open up the clouds and say, I am God, or are you going to just believe in, you know, the things that happen around you? And, um, you know, I think that's kind of the struggle that, you know, just regular human beings have on a, on a, on a, on a regular. Tyler, obviously your faith is a huge part of everything you do, but football is also a huge part of everything you do. If someone sort of sat you in a room and put you in this um, situation where they said you can either never play football ever again, or you could never pray to God, never have a relationship with God. I mean, I don't really envisage a situation where that would be the case, but if you were in that situation, would like how would you decide what's more important to you? Well, for me, I mean, that's an easy, that's an easy answer. Um, you know, I'm never playing football again. Um, <laughs> at the end of the day, um, you know, I serve one person, um, you know, I serve God. And so, you know, football is, you know, temporary. And, you know, one thing my dad used to always tell, you know, cause he was my youth, uh, my youth pastor, um, growing up. And one thing you always used to always tell us was one day, everything you see, when you look around you, everything you see, all the things you've done, um, you know, football, sports, all these, you know, things that you do, the activities you go to. He said, one day it's not going to matter. He said, the only thing that's going to matter is what you do with the name of Jesus Christ. And so that's, you know, something that I've kept, you know, every single day of my life and that I've, you know, put in my back pocket is 
what am I going to do with the name Jesus Christ? And so, you know, football is temporary. It's fun. Um, you know, it's a great game to play. But um, at the end of the day, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, Jesus is ultimately, you know, the, the one. And so, um, you know, that, that's an easy answer for me. Tyler, you're obviously super successful in your field as a footballer uh, and you've got so much further to go in your career. But if you could go back to your really young self, let's say you're maybe 10, 11, just beginning to kind of, well, you started playing football at five, but you're beginning to kind of get into taking it seriously. Is there any advice that you would go back and give your younger self about what it's like to be a Christian in football? Um, if I could give myself some advice, I would honestly say uh, to always remain um, true to your morals, always remain true to your foundation and what you believe. And don't let any coach uh, shake that. Um, you know, you're in a, we're in a time where, uh, especially in football, especially, you know, in the States, like football is a huge deal and there's a lot of money involved. And with that, you know, there's a lot of fame. There's a lot of prestigious coaches there's a lot of, you know, people that have authority and power, um, you know, within society. And um, for me, you know, just always remaining, you know, just remembering to remain faithful to who I am and don't let no coach, don't let any, uh, you know, other player, um, job title, um, anything, you know, take you away from, you know, your foundation, your belief in Jesus Christ, um, because, just from experience, like there's definitely lots of different uh, ways that it can be, you know, tainted. It can be shaken um, where you can be led astray um, to another path uh, where you may think, man, maybe I need to, maybe I need to change. Maybe, maybe what Jesus said, maybe that, maybe that doesn't work. Maybe Mm -hmm. being this type of person, maybe that doesn't work, you know? And so, um, you know, there's definitely been situations where I've came across that where it's maybe it's like, well, you know, it doesn't seem like this working or, oh, they don't like this type of person. They don't like this type of guy, um, you know, that Jesus talked about being. And I'm trying to do that. And it just seems like people just aren't accepting that. And so, um, you know, just always continuing to remain faithful, um, you know, to God and uh, just continue to let him, you know, lead you. And don't stray away from, you know, your um, from your beliefs. Tyler, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad I was able to be a part of it. Unapologetic from Premier Unbelievable. For more shows, resources, and our newsletter, visit premierunbelievable.com.